Well, a little boy one Sunday went to kids church and the lesson for the day it was from Genesis and the story was about how um, God took a rib out of Adam's side and created Eve and um, man when this little boy heard that story it completely blew his mind and he was sort of freaked out and was like just I can't believe this is a, a real story that that's how God made Eve and and so later that afternoon, the little boy was kind of getting sick and not feeling real good. And so his mom, you know, they got home and she kind of said, hey, why don't you just lay down on the couch for a little bit and, and, you know, hopefully you'll start feeling better. Well, he laid on the couch and after 30 minutes or so went by, the mom goes by and she says, hey, how are you feeling? You, are you doing any better? Are you feeling okay? And he said, not really. He's like, I think I'm going to have a wife. <laughs> like, but... Sometimes kids are so silly and they're so uh, fun, you know, um, they can be really entertaining. I don't know about you, but uh, my kids are sometimes my biggest form of entertainment, uh, especially when they're little. And this week, uh, we, me and Megan and our little girl, uh, Cora, she's four years old, we went just kind of like our own day and we went to the Hennessy Pool. Um, if you haven't been there, it's pretty cool. You should go. There is a lot of people, so if you're not, if you're freaked out of people, don't go. Um, but... It, uh, it's really fun. Well, we're going to have this kind of special day with her. And on the way there, she says, she's like, Dad, my brain hurts. And, you know, I'm just like, so after talking with her a little bit, you know, she has a headache. And I just love that because kid, I think that's a better descriptor of headache, don't you? Like my brain hurts. I feel like that. And so from now on, I, if, if I come to you and I say my brain hurts, it means I need some ibuprofen. I got a headache. All right. Um, but kids are so fun. Parenthood is signing your entire peaceful sleep schedule away in exchange for dirty diapers, sticky hands, and caffeine addictions. How many of you in this room, you're a parent, you're like, yes? Like, yes. Um, well, maybe, maybe your kids are a little older than that statement. Maybe it's uh, you need to insert like ball games and concession food, right? And dirty hands and caffeine addictions. Or maybe just a little older and, you're, and they're teenagers or college age and they're like, money? Um, my car's broke, I need a new cell phone, um, money, uh, and then you still have the caffeine addictions to keep up with it all. Yeah, that's kind of parenting. Okay, okay, May maybe this is a little bit better definition of, of parenthood. Ready? Being a good steward of the children that God has placed into your care. This includes spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. Guys, there is no such thing as a perfect family. Every family will experience hardships, conflict, um, tragedies, sometimes problems. We all have imperfect families because we're imperfect people. And I just want to encourage you, especially over the summer, don't be fooled by people's uh, social media highlight reel, okay? When you go on a trip with a family, it's stinking stressful, okay? And I'm just saying. So many times we compare ourselves to other people and what seems um, to be true. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, we all have stuff. None of us are perfect. And, and being a parent is not an easy task. Um, today we're going to explore what Proverbs has to say about raising a child and honoring your parents. So that, that's where we're headed today. Um, first, we're going to explore what Proverbs has to say about raising up a child. So this first part is kind of to parents or parents to be, okay? Um, the first thing that I want to say is just a statement, and I think it's very important for us to start with this. Parent your child's heart. Parent your child's heart. As a parent, you're not just dealing with behavior. Um, God is trusting you with your child's heart. Parent your child's heart. The most misunderstood proverb about parenthood is Proverbs 22.6. It says this, and it might be familiar to you. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. I hate to say this, but that's not a promise. That is a principle. And that is many times preached or taught in a way that, hey, if, if you do the right things, your, your kids are going to grow up and love Jesus and be perfect. But much like brushing your teeth, if you brush your teeth as a principle, you're going to have good breath, right? But it's not a promise because if you eat an onion, 
you were going to have the worst breath ever. My grandma used to always have a garden, and I swear to you, she would get an onion and eat it like an apple. And I promise you, her breath was horrendous, okay? So yeah, if you brush your teeth, you have good breath, unless you eat onions like an apple, okay? Um, the fact is, when your kids leave home, and sometimes before that, they can choose to dishonor you. They can choose to disrespect you. Um, they can choose to live in a way that is different than the way that you raised them. And they can just take a totally different path. Proverbs is saying this. This is the principle. If you do everything you can uh, to raise your kids in a way that, that not only honors God, but honors you too, um, and you, point, you know, try to point them to Jesus with everything you have, you pray for them like crazy, you pray and you pray, um, that, that they will follow Jesus, that their decisions will line up with the things that you're, you're hoping for, you're praying for, you're teaching them. Um, but the principle is this. This will give your child the tools that they need to follow Jesus and to honor you. But they still have a choice. That's, that's a hard truth. And so, yes, the principle is do everything you can to point your kids to Jesus. Do everything that you can to, to parent them uh, in a way that you're parenting their heart. But at the end of the day, they, they will make their own choices at some point. And so I, I just, I don't say that lightly. And I, I just want to just from my heart, I know there's some hurting parents in this room that you've got some wayward kids, whether they are still in your home or not. And, and you're hurt deep in your soul for the way that they are acting or, or maybe it's not you maybe it's a friend of yours and it's their kids that hurts and I just want to say from my heart I'm sorry and um, and what I know is that in a room this size you're not alone there's other people um, that have the same situation and it's hard and and what I can tell you all I can say is is surrender yourself and your child to God and know that God loves you and God loves your kids so much. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop being a good example to them and loving them. I can promise you one thing. In, in Deuteronomy 31, 6, it says um, that the Lord your God will never leave you or forsake you. And so just know that if, you, if you're walking through um, a difficult parenting moment or season, that God is walking with you, and, and sometimes he's carrying you, and sometimes it is just tough. And so I don't, wanna, I don't want to paint a picture that's not true. Parenting can be very difficult. It can be the most amazing thing, the most rewarding thing, and the most difficult thing that you'll ever do. Proverbs encourages us to be an example, to be an example worth following. And um, I want to read a couple uh, Proverbs here about this, but um, are you an example worth following? Are you an example worth following? 23, 26, it says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. That is a huge responsibility. Do you hear how that is? Here, give me your heart. That's huge. I hope you feel that as a parent. It's a huge responsibility. 27, it says, the righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. When you parent uh, in a godly way, when you have a God-centered home, when you point your kids to Jesus, <clears throat> when you point your kids to Jesus, it, um, it blesses your kids and it blesses you. So are you an example to your kids that's worth following right now? The way that you're living, I'm talking about your relationships. Number one, let's start there. The way that you relate to people, when people burn you, hurt you, how do you deal with that? Are you a good example to them? In your relationships, in the way that you uh, talk about people behind their back or in front of them. In your relationships, is it healthy? The way that you're modeling having relationships with your kids? In your attitude, sometimes it's just a tone. You just got a rough tone with people all the time. How's your attitude? How's your health? Seriously, your kids are watching you. 
Um, the way that you take care of your body, are you a good example to your kids? That matters to God. God wants us to be healthy um, holistically, right? Our mind, body, soul. Spiritually, the way that you pursue God, is it worth following? Or would your kids even know, besides the fact that you come to church? Would they even know that you love God and he's a huge part of who you are? The time is now to parent. The time is now. If you have kids in your home, the time is now. I think sometimes as parents, we're like, hey, we'll get to that character issue later. Uh, Man, I sure just don't want to deal with that this week. Let's just kind of not talk about it and push it under the rug. Um, But the time is now. Uh, In 1918, it says, discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. That is some strong language, friends. 2011 says, even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure or upright. Don't ignore behavior that needs to be dealt with. Character issues that need to be talked about. The time is now. Uh, I love Paul David Tripp. He has uh, books and he's a counselor and I think he may be a pastor as well. He, he has this quote that I want to read you. It says, not, only, or not all of the wrong your children do is a direct rebellion to authority. Much of the wrong is a result of lack of of character. Doesn't that give you the ability to give your kids some grace? They're building their character. God is growing them as a person. Not every eye roll from a teenage girl or stomp or slam door from a teenage boy is in direct rebellion to you. Sometimes it is, it's their character. It's so easy to take that stuff personal and feel like you're failing. Instead, see it as an indicator of their heart. It's an indicator of the areas, um, uh, the, the areas of character that need some attention. If, if you are taking notes, I'd encourage you to write this down right here. It says, um, I am called to love them graciously, patiently, and with understanding. That is what God desires for you. That is how God wants you to parent your kids. The same kind of love and grace that God pours out on you, you have to be able to offer to your own kids. The same kind of patience that God has with you. Man, I'm in in process, big time. I'm on a journey to follow Jesus and I screw it up all the time. God gives me that grace and that love. And that's the same thing we have to offer to our own kids. With understanding. Parenting your kids isn't a, oh, get to that tomorrow kind of thing. It's a today thing. The time is now. Next thing that that Proverbs speaks of is discipline. And uh, it talks about it several times. A couple of those verses, one of them is 1324. It says, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him um, is diligent to discipline him. And 23, 13, and 14, it says, do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with the rod, he won't die. He will not die. Uh, 14 says, if you strike him with the rod, you will save his soul from Sheol. And that is not necessarily hell. That is um, a Hebrew word that is like a place of death. And so it's like, he's going to, he's going to, it's going to lead him to death, basically. Um, it's not going to lead him to death is what this is saying. And, and Proverbs obviously is, is saying, you know, spank your kids and beat them with a the rod and all this stuff. Um, you may or may not agree with uh, that kind of uh, discipline, and that's between, honestly, that's between you and God and your spouse, however you decide to discipline. But the deeper point here is don't withhold discipline from your kids. Don't withhold discipline from your kids. You're not doing yourself any favors, and you're not doing them any favors by withholding discipline from your kids. Sometimes that looks like some chores. Sometimes that looks like um, privileges. Sometimes that looks like, for little kids, maybe timeouts. When I was a kid, my dad whipped my butt, I'm just telling you, and it hurt bad. And I didn't do what he, I mean, I, I learned from it. I'm just telling you, that's, that's how I grew up. I'm not saying how you should do it, um, but I definitely learned from that. And um, so don't withhold discipline from your child. Discipline in love, though. We're, we're not just trying to get the right kind of behavior. We're parenting their heart. And discipline in a way that trains your child. 
Um, lovingly, patiently, parent your child's heart. At the end of the day, we, don't, we want to see heart transformation, not just behavior modification. It's so easy, especially with little kids, um, to, to parent to their behavior instead of parent to their heart. We're trying to teach them lessons for life. Not just be good, don't do that, don't hit, stop scratching him. It's, we're trying to parent their heart. We're trying to teach them lessons that they need for the rest of their life. Now we're going to move into an, uh, another subject here of honoring your parents. And so that first part it was really two parents or people that are going to be parents someday maybe, um, where this, honoring your parents, um, this, this is to everybody. Um, and, and this is to, to children of any age. You may be in here and you're older than me. Um, you have or had parents at some point, or you had some guardians or some, some people that, that you would look up to as, as a parent. And what I want to encourage all of us with this morning is that um, God has kids learn how to obey and, and honor their parents so that they will learn how to obey and honor him. God has kids learn how to submit to God's or, or to their parents' authority so that they will learn how to submit to God's authority. It's an important, it's an important thing. It's an important lesson. Learn how to obey and honor God. Um, you didn't choose your parents, um, but God did. And so uh, Proverbs kind of makes this assumption that, that whoever is reading this follows God and loves their kids, okay? So as we're reading this, you just need to know uh, that the assumption is that you love your kids, you love God, you're following him, okay? And so um, I would say um, for, for maybe people in the room, uh, you, you have foster parents or you have step parents or, or a grandma or a grandpa or other people that are, are watching you or hanging out with you and, and raising you at this point. Um, just insert those people for the parents in what we're going to read today. Um, the, and and we'll, that will help you understand this just as good. Um, Proverbs 6, 20 through 22, it says, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. 23, 22, it says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she's old. 20, 20, it says, if one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. Man, that one is deep. I'm telling you, if you dishonor your parents, it brings darkness over your life. If you can't forgive your parents, it will bring darkness over your life. 30, 17, it says, The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be picked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. That's extreme. The reality is, guys, that there's no perfect parents. And you may have been hurt by your parents. And you're like, how the heck am I supposed to honor my parents? They blew it. And that may be true. You may be hurt by your parents. They may have disappointed you. They may have blown it. But there is still a way to honor them, believe it or not. You may, even, you may not even have a relationship with them, or your parents may have passed away at this point. But you know what? There is a way to honor your parents, even imperfect parents, and that's to forgive them. And some of us walk around with unforgiveness that's like a ginormous backpack that is just eating us alive. And so what I want to encourage you with this morning is that there is a way to honor your parents, no matter what. You can honor your parents. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and you may live long in the land. My, both of my parents have passed, and I still want to live in a way that honors my parents, that honors the way that they raised me, that honors the way that they treated me, you know, and the sacrifices that they made. I still want to live a life, even though they're not here and they won't see it, I want to live in a way that honors the legacy that they left me. 
Maybe you're in this room and you're like me. I'm a new grandparent. I've been doing this for three years now. I feel like I'm starting to get it figured out. Um, but grand, uh, Proverbs 17, 6, it says, Grandchildren are the crown of the aged and the glory of children is their fathers. Honor your parents. Honor your, your mother and your father and even your grandparents. How can you live in a way that honors your parents, even if they blew it? even if they hurt you? What is a way that you can show them the kind of love and grace, the same kind of love and grace that God shows you? How can you love and honor your parents, whether they're alive or not? Parenting is, is no easy job. Um, so what's a way that you can, maybe even this week, thank them for their sacrifices? Thank them for the way that they have raised you. God never calls us to anything that, um, he, he would never call you to anything that he doesn't give you the tools to succeed. Parenting is no different. God, everything that you need to be a good parent is found in a relationship with God and in his word and in community as well. Um, I just want you to know this morning, if, if you're a parent and you're like worn out, um, man, you're in, you're in a safe place to talk about that. Um, you're not the only one, and parenting is very difficult. That's why we're supposed to be in community so we can encourage each other. I want to end our time this morning. I just want to encourage whether you are a kid or a parent, either way, uh, I think at the end of the day, if you're here, you probably want to be in a healthy home. You probably want um, to be in a home where God is the center of it. And so I want to give you just a couple steps towards a God-centered home. Um, and so if you're taking notes, I just write these down. Maybe these can just be some, some encouraging things for you, even this week, even today, to start implementing to have a God-centered home. And so number one is thankfulness. See the good, man. See the good. Thank God together for the things that he's done and doing in, in your family's life. Can I give you just a little suggestion for even today? After church, whether you go home or go out to eat, make a list together of all the blessings that God has, has given your family. In this season of life, how has God blessed you? Write it down. Thank God for the way that he has blessed you. Number two is prayer and scripture together. Prayer and scripture together. I think, um, I mean, in some ways it's easy to, uh, to spend time with God and to talk to God on our own. But it gets a little harder to gather the family together around the couches or the kitchen table um, and talk about Jesus. Read the verse of the day. Pray for the week. And so I just want to encourage you, whether it's around the table or, or praying with your kids before they go to sleep, bring prayer and scripture into your home. Number three would be uh, healthy family rhythms. Uh, if you're a reader, I have a book suggestion for you on this. Uh, Habits of the Household. You can get it on Amazon or whatever. Look up Habits of the Household. That's a book that um, I've studied in community with, with some people that are even in this room right now. And it is one of the most encouraging books I've ever read about habits. Um, like I said a minute ago, uh, both my parents passed away and all of our family traditions centered around them. And so we have had to figure out what what traditions do we want to have as a family? You know, how do we go on vacation without my parents? How do we do Christmas? All these things. And this book, um, Habits of the Household, really gave us um, just some, some good handles of how to begin to pray with our kids and, and how to have a God-centered home. And so uh, that's just a good resource if you want to check that out. But um, what, what family rhythms do you have? Like if you don't do it, your kids are like, hey, um, when are, when are we going to do couch time? Or, hey, when are we going to do family night? What healthy rhythms do you have in your home? Mercy and grace, number four. The words, I'm sorry, and I forgive you, should be said all the time in your house. You know why? Because conflict happens. People get sideways with each other. I'm sorry, and I forgive you, should come out of your mouth as a parent all the time. Our kids need to hear us say we're sorry. We're not perfect. They need to know that, that even we mess up. 
I'm sorry and I forgive you. Grace and mercy. The same grace and mercy that God pours out on us every single day, we need to be able to model what that looks like to give it to our kids. Number five, love each other. It's just a house if there's, if there's no love. It's not a home. If you want to have a home, a God-centered home, there has to be love. There has to be love. Number six is guard your family. And I want to stress this one. Satan hates you. He hates your family. He would love to break everything up that you have good. He would love to tempt you with things that will destroy your life. And you know what? It's a full-on attack. So if you're not guarding your home by what is watched in your home, what's on everybody's phones, um, who's invited into your home, you encourage what you allow. So what are you allowing in your home? You're encouraging what you allow. Are you guarding your family? Do you realize Satan hates your guts, man? He wants to kill, steal, and destroy your life, your family. So are you guarding your family from the evil of this world? Number seven is to serve each other. I did a pre-marriage counseling this week for a couple that's getting married here in a couple weeks. And one of the things I told them, and it's just general good advice, is if you will try to out-love each other and out-serve each other, you will have the most healthy marriage ever. Try to out-love each other, try to out-serve each other. Same is true for families, for, for kids, for teenagers, for their parents. Try to out-serve each other in your home. Don't wait till someone makes you do something or gripes at you for not doing something. Try to out-serve each other. That's going to really change the atmosphere in your home. Be a servant. Number eight, the final one here is post some reminders. Um, that can look a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. Um, for me personally, I like Expo markers, you know, on my bathroom um, mirror. I can write all kinds of stuff, scripture, reminders, things I'm praying for. Uh, it's just a great place because I'm there. That sounds really bad. I'm there all the time. Anyways, um, I'm in my bathroom a lot. Anyways, no, um, but I do, I just want to encourage you to, to run into the truth of Jesus. Whether it's framed art in your house that's reminders from the Bible, whether it's sticky notes that you put on your kid's door that's scripture, or I'm praying for you, I love you. Maybe it's reminders in your car. Every time you get in your car, you see scripture, you see truth. How can you post some reminders to remind you to have a God-centered home, to remind you that Jesus loves you. Parents, God desires for us to raise our kids in a way that honors Him and points our kids to Jesus. How's that going for you? Are you raising your kids in a way that you are parenting your child's heart? It matters. In kids of all ages... God desires for us to honor our totally imperfect parents and even forgive them. That is how God gives us an opportunity to show love and grace. The same love and grace that he gives us, God gives us the opportunity to show that to our parents. They need it. You know, I've had to forgive my parents even though they've, they've passed away. I've had to work through forgiving them for things they did when they were alive. You know why? Because I don't want to carry that stuff the rest of my life. You might be here today and you're like, Kevin, it's a mess at my house. Or maybe you know somebody that it's a mess at their house. I just want you to know that God is the solution. God can give you everything that you need to have a healthy home. Community is such a beautiful thing. We need support. There's hope, is what I'm trying to tell you this morning. There's hope for you. And I just want you to know that this is a place where you can come and be honest about the things that you're not awesome at. And parenting is stinking hard. So I just want you to know that I hope, I hope when you come here, this is a place where you can be encouraged by other people, be encouraged from 
um, from the stage. I hope that this can be a place where you can come. And if things are out of balance, maybe you can get some encouragement for how to get things back into balance. Just know that God loves you. And he is, he is waiting for you to surrender everything to him. And that includes your parenting. That includes your relationship with your parents. Will you pray with me? God, I'm so thankful for Proverbs, thankful for um, this church. And I just pray, God, that as we begin to um, just worship you and sing to you, talk with you right now, God, I pray that you would just hear our hearts, that we would just bear our souls to you. I know that we can trust you with whatever's going on. God, move in our hearts, move in our lives. Give us the boldness to create God-centered homes. Give us the boldness to discipline our kids in a healthy way that points them to you. God, help us to, to parent to our child's hearts. God, we need your help. We cannot do this on our own. Please put people in our life that can support us. And God, just guide us every single day. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I, I want to encourage you to stand at this time, and we're, we're just going to spend a minute worshiping God. And um, maybe, maybe you're here, and you're just like really hurting today. I just would encourage you just to lay that at the feet of Jesus. Let him scoop you up in his lap and just comfort you right now. Um, so let's, let's sing together. If you need prayer, um, or if you, maybe you're interested in baptism or or what it means to be saved, or anything, um, I'll be down front. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to pray with you. Uh, but let's sing out to God together.